I would like to introduce you, Stephen Gisel. He will he will speak today about um, uh, uh, a better enum uh, enum value object uh, regarding to domain driven design. I know Stephen since a, a few years, uh, or at least one, since we work <laughs> together, right? <laughs> and we are. Uh, <laughs> Internally in our company in Silke, we're having our own uh, .NET user group, our private user group that we call it together. Uh, yeah. I can say that he's an amazing person, really, really passionate. He wanted to get this talk done. He went so far that he will not get only one done, but he will get another talk at the end. <laughs> <So> <laughs> he, will, he will take to his uh, that, that passionate. So Steven Chisel, uh, a better enum, enum value object. Mm -hmm. Steven Chisel. The stage Good. is yours. Okay, I will share my screen and hope it works. Um, I hope you can see it right now. Can somebody yes. confirm? Yes. Perfect. So, um, thank you for the introduction. Um, exactly, I'm working with uh, Jose. So, and so it's it's very common that you're on multiple projects. So over the time, you will learn to reuse your, like let's say, knowledge assets. And one of them I want to present today. And this is coming from basically a bit of domain-driven design. Um, we are working in different domains. So what you want to try is to a bit synchronize the business to your code. You want to, for example, the same speech or the same language. And we, we saw at some point that we fall off with enumerations. And I will show you in a few seconds why. Um, First, what is coming here? Um, a short recap what a value object is in the first place. Um, basically, then I want to directly go to Visual Studio because I'm not the biggest fan of a lot of slides and I'm also not good at making slides. So not to bother you about that, we just go directly to some C-sharp hacking. And at the end, I will show you some references if you want to see more because 10 to 15 minutes is, of course, not enough to cover the whole topic. Okay, first, what is a value object? Well, as Marty Fowler said, a small, simple object like money or a date range whose equality isn't based on the identity. Um, this means, for example, if you have uh, the color is a good thing, money is a good thing, you just compare the values. Also, what is very common for a value object is that it's immutable. Once created, you have the same thing over the whole lifespan. And the value object is always owned by something. It's not living on its own. It's just part of a bigger thing. And I want to show you something now for the enums. Because we thought, OK, enums are a bit off in the sense of if you have an enum, you can make the following. You say, OK, I have an enum. For example, I have a language. And then I can basically say, OK, I have, let's say, German. Could, which is could you zoom your? font a little bit to make it bigger oh yes sorry yes um wonderful nice. fantastic <laughs> thank you so much oh, sorry yeah, this is a, yeah as a 4k screen which yeah sorry for that um you can have swiss um you can have another language doesn't matter right now and the problem right here is first if you want to use it you can have something like that you can make the weirdest stuff possible, like say invalid is recasted to that and you can make a minus 100 and this is totally acceptable and maybe not like that. This is totally acceptable by the compiler and you don't want that. And you also don't get any errors in the runtime. This is one thing falling off from normal enums. And the second one is in domain driven design, normally you want to have the function as close to the object as possible. If I want to have something for the language, I want to extend the language and with any function, the only way I can do it right now is I can make a extension method or I can somehow like the owning property or the owning class could have those functions. Um, and we thought this is really not a good idea. You want to have everything compact as possible. Everything should live on its own. And that's why we, build something around the value object. This is from Vladimir Kolikov, if someone uh, rings a bell to someone. Um, he has very nice Pluralsight course. I just really can recommend that. 
And so we made a small um, NuGet package. I just already included it here. And the basic idea is like the enumeration class from Microsoft. They also provide an example. You just can Google that and you find it pretty easily. Um, you have your, for example, language, which is now an enum value object from language. And now I can show you what is the main difference to a normal enum. First, we can delete this line because this is not working anymore. Um, first, we introduce a private constructor. Um, we say this has a key. This is also how it's defined. And we have a base class, which takes a lot of stuff for us. And we are almost done with our magic. What we can do now is we define, like in an enum, our values. What is valid for a language? I said, for example, if we have the language or Swiss, um, the key would be, in this case, ch. Thank you, IntelliSense. That was not really helpful. Uh, we have German, which is de. And then we're done. This is, this is the minimal implementation you can have. And now you can do a lot of stuff. Um, you can have, for example, another, oh, voila, another function. You, this is the cool thing now. You can say, print something. For the sake of, of presentation, it doesn't, doesn't do anything useful. Hello, mama. So, and now what you can do is let's let's say you have a DTO, you have user input, or some interface. Um, in functional programming, it's not very common that you throw exceptions. Um, it's more common to get an error code. Um, the, the best way to think about this, or a good example to think about this, is for example the Go programming language, which always returns an error code if you want that. This is what the what the design is made for. And um, so what I can do is I can say I have a language. And now this is where we use the library. We can say I have this language, and I just call a create method. And this comes from the base class here. And here I have to provide a key. And for example, I can take ch. And as you can see now, it's a result. So we don't have the enum value object itself. In the first place, we have the result. And now we can first check if my input was correct. We can check for success or its failure. It doesn't Matter if we say, for example, it's failure here, then uh, we can write something like your language code does not exist. It exists. So um, this would be an example. Um, and now, after I have the result, I know, for example, here, this is a totally valid thing. Uh, we just call this language result what it is. We can use the thing whatever we want. Now we have the value, and you can see this is really the oh, variable. Thank you very much. This is now really our enum value object. And with this, we can do whatever we want. We have our print something function. We can also access the key, and we can work with that. There's also the possibility to compare directly to, to compare directly to its key. This is totally valid or possible. Um, you can also compare it just for the sake of presentation. I just write everything down. This is really not really meaningful what they're doing right now. Um, this is up to you to fill in the gap for something useful. Uh, you can also, of course, compare it to some of those. And this is totally fine. Um, one major difference to the implementation, or another major issue uh, difference to the implementation of Microsoft sample is on, on their side, they always introduce an ID. Um, maybe I can find this quickly. I know it's very small right now. I will make it bigger in a second. And then you can see what I, what I mean. For example, they always have an ID. And we thought this is not a really a good idea. We uh, have normally root aggregates and aggregates in domain driven design. And these are your only entities allowed to have an ID. Every value object can only live with an aggregate or the root aggregate. So you don't want to have an ID. You don't want to store them separately. If you really want to do this, you can have an abstraction layer over your um, database or your persistence layer. This is totally valid. Um, you can have that. This is fine. 
Um, but we decided we don't want that because they only live besides, uh, inside another class. There's also in the, in the GitHub package, I can show you this later. There's also other NuGet packages where you basically can directly serialize them with a JSON serializer. So you don't have to do every time the, for example, language.key to make it to the string and the string back to a um, enum value object. We have libraries for that. So you don't have to take care of such stuff. Exactly. Um, one thing maybe I forgot to explain, what, what is really mandatory here is the private one. You always want to have a private or protected constructor. You don't want to have a public one because then you you just drop the static create function. The, this, the static create function just looks if this what you answer is really correct. I can just go in what it does is pretty straightforward. Um, what decompiling, thank you very much. Exactly. So basically, it looks if your key is at the all enumeration. And if it's not, you get just the result failure. And this is what you always want to have because then, only then, you always know when you have a real language object, it's always valid. It only can be valid. That is the good thing about that. Um, unfortunately, .NET gives you no way to force that for you. So you can't say, please, please, please have a private or protected constructor, you can also make a public one. But I advise strongly against that. And exactly, so that's, that's just a short um, introduction of that. The library uh, exists on GitHub, is MIT licensed. Um, feel free to use it, feel free to extend it. If you want to know more about functional stuff in general, I can very, very recommend the C-sharp functional extensions. Uh, from Vladimir Korikov. This is uh, our base library, has also some nice stuff. The value object is itself, where we based on, is uh, coming from that library. And if you want to know a more, more, you want to know more about the main driven design in general, I can very recommend the concept explained by Martin Fowler or a very, very detailed plural site um, course also from Vladimir Korikov. Thank you. That was all so far. And Jose, I will give you back your presentation if you like. <laughs>